What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today we're in the Milwaukee Domes. I'm doing a really cool thing today. We're collecting flowers from the sausage tree and we're gonna take them to another conservatory and do a trade. This is really the only way that the sausage tree can reproduce. You can't uh, uh, self-pollinate this one. So it's gonna require going somewhere else and getting flowers from another tree. So I think it's pretty cool. This is an awesome opportunity. I'm really excited to actually get to do this. Although it's kind of a long drive, but I think it's totally worth it. So let's collect some of those flowers. Before we begin collecting the actual flowers of this tree, I will give you a little bit of information about it. This tree is also known as the Kigelia africana, and it is the only tree in its genus of Kigelia. Like you probably inferred from the actual name, the scientific name, this tree is found in Africa. Another amazing fact about this tree is it is over 56 years old. This was planted in the domes when it was constructed in 1966, and that is absolutely amazing. Now, the reason this tree's common name is called the sausage tree is because it has sausage-like fruits that hang from vine branch-like structures called peduncles. The tree uses those exact vines we just talked about for all of its flowers, and that's why it fruits on those vines as well, because once you pollinate the flowers, then you get the sausage-like fruits. The sausage tree flowers become most fragrant at night, so its main pollinator is bats, but it does get pollinators from other species such as birds and insects. Its fruits are not edible by people unless they've gone through a fermentation or even like a baking process. That's pretty much the only way humans have consumed it, but it does get consumed by many African animals. So now that you know a little bit more about this tree, let's get on to collecting the actual flowers. So what you're seeing on the screen are mostly flowers that have not bloomed yet or flowers that have already dropped off, revealing the stigma that is left behind. And that'll become very important later in this video. I wasn't able to catch any open flowers on this tree because I think most of them are blooming more towards the evening because their primary pollinator is bats. And where are those missing flowers? Well, most of them are littered across the floor. So as they drop off, these are what we are actually going to collect because these are what contain the pollen. If you look closely inside of each one of the red flowers, you'll see a lot of dust and that is the pollen we are after. The thin yellow structures that you're seeing inside of the flowers are the stamen and these are the pollen producers. These are exactly what we need to collect and bring down to the Lincoln Park Conservatory. Both flower parts have fallen from the tree, so I can kind of show you what they are supposed to look like up in the tree. You can see how the stigma slides through the base of the flower and kind of pokes out right around where the pollen is as well. These plants cannot self-pollinate in the same leaf, which is why we have to travel two hours down to Chicago and make a trade. One of the very interesting ways that we're actually gonna be transporting these flowers is inside of a cooler. Usually if you keep the pollen really cold or even in a freezer, it lasts a lot longer than if it was just out in the warm human environment. So this will be an essential tool for getting this pollen safely down to Chicago. We're gonna end up taking about two bags all the way down there of these flowers and hopefully we can get about that many back for them. And then they can end up pollinating the tree. So it should be pretty cool to do and see. Now that we have all the flowers collected and in the cooler, it is time to hit the road and head down to Chicago. We are gonna be taking these to the Lincoln Park Conservatory. The drive for the most part was pretty easy. It didn't take too long and there wasn't much traffic. So we got there in pretty good time. All right, we are at the Lincoln Park Conservatory right now. We finally delivered the flowers and we're just gonna take a look at their sausage tree before we head out. This thing is pretty amazing and they actually have really low hanging fruits. So you can finally get an idea of really how big these really are. And they are huge and really awesome. All the sausages that you see on these trees are actually about a year old, if not a little bit older. These were all from pollinations the year before, and some have even lasted slightly longer than that. So they really last a long time on these trees. I was really amazed to see how much weight those vines can really hold. I mean, some of them had multiple sausages, if not five to six of them on one vine, which is pretty crazy because we're talking 50, 60 pounds at that point with how big these really are. So I was really amazed to see that. And the fact that this tree is much shorter than the Milwaukee Domes, you can really get a different perspective by standing underneath it. I was really glad that they had some of the sausage tree fruits that were actually on the ground that had already fallen off the tree because I could actually hold one in my hands and really see how big it was. These things are massive and they are heavy. It was really awesome to be able to hold one. After seeing the Lincoln Park Conservatory sausage tree, I'm really amazed by how big the one at the domes really is. Because of the structure of the Milwaukee domes being very unique and very tall, they can grow much taller trees than most other conservatories can just because of the sheer height of the actual domes. So it was really cool to see the two different trees and the different growing styles and how you can enjoy them both separately. All right, we are in day two of the process. I am back from Chicago and I am back in Milwaukee at the Mitchell Park Conservatory. We are actually gonna pollinate these flowers today, so we are gonna show you this process. 
We are actually here with Mary, the head horticulturist of the Tropical Dome, and she's going to teach us how to pollinate the sausage tree. The first step is going to be taking the flowers out of the cooler that we got from the Lincoln Park Conservatory. Mary is ripping open the flower to get better access for peeling out the stamen and just having a much longer piece to use to pollinate. I tried doing this earlier and I just ripped it out without ripping the flower and mine was very short and not as easy to use. So this is why we leave it to the pros. Once you've removed a stamen from the flower, you just take that with the pollen and you rub it on all of the exposed stigmas. Lastly, Mary will take her fingers and run it up the stigma, pinching the tips together, helping the pollen seat in there better, and that's really all it takes to pollinate the sausage tree. Now that that's taken place, it'll only take a few weeks and then small sausages will start to emerge. After that, we'll wait another year and once the tree blooms again, we will do the same process all over again. All right, as typical for tech plant videos, I like to provide some sort of an update right away in the video. So about three weeks has passed and I am back at the domes and here you can see all the new sausage fruits. They're actually really large. I would say they're at least 12 inches, um, maybe a slight bit shorter, but still compared to the previous footage of the flowers, you can really see how big they are already. I'm pretty amazed at how quickly they were able to grow given such short time since pollination. This was actually a really fun adventure to go on. I never knew that the sausage tree was this involved between two different conservatories. And I'm very thankful for the both of them that they put in all this effort in order to make sure the trees have sausages. This would not be possible if they did not work together. And I'm glad they do. Both the Milwaukee domes and the Chicago Lincoln Park Conservatory are very amazing conservatories and you guys definitely need to check them out. They both have very unique structures and very unique plants in them and just the way they're laid out is very awesome. I highly recommend you guys visit these places and see the sausage tree and much much more. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and got to learn a little bit about the collaboration between two of these awesome conservatories all so that way we can enjoy such amazing plants. Thanks and I hope to catch you next time.